as has indicated, through communication. This from who? As we are discussing this, this is a letter from the CS Treasury requesting for rescheduling or appearance before the Senate. When is this? Honorable Senators, the CS for Treasury and Economic Planning, the CS Honorable CP John Bandi Ngongo, his letter has just arrived and he has uh, said that the reason is that he is engaged in a critical meeting at the State House that requires his presence and attention. And also he has not indicated when you will be appearing. He has just said, I look forward to engaging your esteemed house at a later date. That is the letter. And you know, uh, I'm also very truthful. So I've, I've read the content as it is. So I want to give a few senators maybe to interact with this communication. Yes, senators will continue and... Uh, Finish up. Uh, honorable point, Chair, okay. in fact, that practice is something that you must not allow. There is no way a cabinet secretary can send a letter to you seated in the chair this morning. I am very shocked because you see, Honorable Chair, we woke up very early in the morning to come and attend this session. The question that I was supposed to put to CS Mbadi is a question that is over a year old. It has taken him less than two weeks to become a proper Kenya Kwanza cabinet secretary who has no respect for this house. Honorable Chair, we cannot allow this. Because we want to engage with these CSs. He cannot tell us, and uh, I, I have heard in this house before, uh, people saying that when Kibaki was president, if there was a matter before parliament and another one before state house, the president was that you come and attend to the matters in the house first. I want to tell John Badi that this is unacceptable. This is unacceptable, totally unacceptable, when he has to show respect for this house. And in fact, it is worse that he was a member of parliament. If he had just been plucked from the wilderness, like some of the other people I see, Maybe we would excuse him. But he is a member of parliament. He has, uh, he has even finished two weeks. Honorable Chair, this is unacceptable. Respect for this house. And as of yesterday, there was already communication that he had confirmed he was going to come. When these state house meetings just spring up on people like it is a surprise party. Honorable Chair, this is unacceptable. At the very minimum, he should have written yesterday and said he was not going to be able to make it. We have also other business to attend. Honorable John Mbadi must be called to order. This is not the John Badi I, I knew. I don't know what they have done to him. He used to respect Parliament. Sorry. Sorry. Actually, I, I thought the, our visitors are not allowed when... Uh, I want to give our guests uh, just 10 minutes. Then I, we can do house, housekeeping. I have directed that uh, our visitors here, the, the CS for Liver and Social Protection and his team, to give this house 15 minutes to interact with this communication. Yes, Majority Leader. I, I keep telling my friend uh, Sifuna that if he wants to become a good legislator, he must not conflate issues. The point that he's raising is something that all of us on this side agree with. I have been on this floor severally coming down heavily against cabinet ministers when they fail to appear before this house. But when he wants to leave it on record and say that uh, John Badi has become a proper Kenya Kwanzaa minister who has no respect for parliament, I cannot allow him to do that, Mr. Speaker, because he's disparaging a, a cabinet, Mr. Speaker, and their ministers, while he's saying that there's a cabinet minister seated here waiting 
to respond to questions, Mr. Speaker. Is it in order, Mr. Speaker, for Senator Edwin Sifuna to claim that a proper Kenya Kwanza minister has no regard for parliament? Can he table any fact, Mr. Speaker, to, 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 uh, to support his allegations, Mr. Speaker? Because otherwise, you reduce a very valid point to a partisan debate that is useless. We had a very valid conversation that we would have had about the presence or otherwise of ministers. But now he wants to distract us with side shows, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Honorable Senators, uh, let us not be emotional on this matter. Actually, this is a matter concerning the whole House. This is a bipartisan issue. So, Senator Sifuna, maybe you can kill your record so that uh, we, can, we, we can be able to move uh, nicely, Honorable Senator Sifuna. No, no, I've asked him to, to clarify that bit so that... Uh... You don't want me to speak. <laughs> Honorable Speaker, I don't know what other evidence the majority leader would want tabled of disrespect of this house other than the letter that has been brought to you while you are seated in the chair. And the fact that he admits that we have engaged on this issue repeatedly, it is indicative of uh, a, a, a tradition within the Kenya Kwanzaa government that they disrespect this house all the time. We have dealt with this issue more than enough times, Honorable Speaker, Senator and the majority Sifuna, leader cannot gag me. You cannot gag me, Honorable Cheruyot. Senator Sifuna, the, the disrespect is in that letter that has been brought this morning. We woke up here to seat, do this Senator job. Where is Mbadi? You can't defend Mbadi. Have your seat, Senator Sifuna. Uh, Senator Enoch. You know, Mr. Speaker, there, there are things you are saying that, that are difficult to implement. When you say people should not be emotional about this matter, it's difficult not to be emotional about, about what we have just witnessed. It is difficult, Mr. Speaker, uh, to deal with a fact which is on record that a cabinet secretary expected to appear before a House of Parliament is writing to the speaker while the session is on to say he cannot appear. And the reason given is in state house. Mr. Speaker, I will say two things and try to be not too emotional about it. One, Article 132 of the Constitution, functions of the president the president is accountable to parliament, the president himself, to parliament. Article 153 of the constitution, the cabinet is accountable to parliament. The speaker, those two articles read together, place the parliament of the Republic of Kenya at such a position that when you are required to appear before either a committee of parliament or a plenary sitting of parliament, then everything else must stop. Mr. Speaker, this is just plain reading of the law. And, and, and you know, when now I see my brother, my very good friend, the Senator of Gericho, who is also the the, the majority leader, uh, getting emotional and saying that, that Senator Sifuna should be taught a lesson. The speaker, I'm wondering, between Senator Sifuna and the CS for Treasury, who needs to be taught certain lessons? <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, just allow me to, to finish. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, this is a serious matter. In fact, Mr. Speaker, this is so serious. And you know what? Let us test our own powers and privileges as parliament. Let us put that to test. Mr. Speaker, you can order the sergeant at arms or the inspector general of police to present the cabinet secretary for treasury here today, this morning. Mr. Speaker, you know, we cannot, we, we cannot say 
that parliament has been disregarded. And every time that we are disregarded, then we, are, we permit those people that disregard the, the Senate to continue doing their things and doing bad manners. Last Mr. Speaker. Senator Riot, you should not feel bad when uh, Senator Sifuna says that uh, the CS Treasury is learning <laughs> bad manners. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, at the sitting of uh, the Senate Business Committee yesterday. What is your point of order regarding what is. Uh, no, I thought you, I, I, you are giving me an opportunity. No, no. To, <laughs> you are. Sorry. I thought you had concluded. You, you are a very experienced I, member. I, when I, I am very when sorry. When you raise a point of order, you are standing on a point of order. Speaker, I so thought you had concluded. Your point of order? I thought you. Then, then, then I'll, I'll have my time if you. If I'm able to catch your eye. In less than, in less <laughs> well, than speaker, a minute. You know, we, we defer to Senator Alwale, honestly. Surely, I was on my feet. And you're a leader in this house. Mr. Speaker, we are saying you should actually order Masengeli to bring uh, the treasury in CS here in this house. Mr. Speaker. Lastly, I was saying, Mr. Speaker, I was saying that, you know, when Senator Sifuna says, that the CS Treasury is, is learning bad manners and bad behavior from the Kenya Kwanza administration, that is a statement of fact. That this, this administration is very ill-mannered. That's what it is. This administration has refused many, many times to appear before this Senate. And we are saying the CS Treasury should not go and when 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 he was donated by ODM See, now, to go and join the government, the Speaker, Tawabua, they, Tawabua, they, Tawabua, they they send him there to go and unnecessary anxiety. So Mr. Speaker, I'm I just finishing. We, we if just, you bear with me uh, one minute, point of order bear with me the, one minute, Mr. Speaker. Just bear with me one minute. These these us, points of order, Mr. Speaker, they don't help. To the point of but what point of order on what now? What what is out of order now? Yes, majority. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, just allow me to finish. Just allow me to finish, Mr. Speaker. I have one minute. Just one minute. Even. Yes, Majority Linda. You know, I was willing to allow these cheap shots to pass. But you have heard Senator Wambua repeatedly refer to me in his statement saying that I'm defending the indefensible. Yet, I pointed to Senator Sefuna that what better evidence do you need that Kenya Kwanza cabinet ministers respect this house, other than the fact that while he was making his complaint, those are cabinet ministers seated here. Therefore, you cannot generalize, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, if you can provide, if you can protect me from the hecklers, yes. I can make my point, Mr. Speaker. The Honorable Senator. But what you are doing is heckling. What better way? Mr. Speaker, it is not a statement of fact what Senator Wambua and Senator Edwin Sifuna are stating, that Kenya Kwanzaa ministers do not honor summons to this house. I have demonstrated that there is one in the house this, this morning, Mr. Speaker. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, if one minister fails to appear, Mr. Speaker, if one minister fails to appear, is it a statement of fact as Senator Wambua is stating that Kenya Kwanzaa ministers do not honor summons to this house? I think this minister is... Almost every cabinet minister has come to this house more than 100 times, Mr. Speaker. You know, half the time, first of all, the minority side began by boycotting this exercise. Senator, they never used to appear. Probably that's why they don't know that ministers Senator, have been coming to this house. Senator, let us uh, make progress now. And my 15 minutes are over. Can you conclude in 30 seconds? You are 30 seconds, Senator Mboa. Mr. Speaker. I was saying, and I'll conclude, that when the CS Treasury was donated by ODM to Kenya Kwanzaa, I, I listened to the Azimio leader saying that they have been donated to go and teach those people how to do things. They are not supposed to go there and learn bad manners. They are supposed to go there and teach good manners, Mr. Speaker. So it should be produced here in this house. I thank, thank you, Mr. You. Speaker. Senator Joyce Corrid. Yeah, um, uh, thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. I, I, would also, I also want to Remember, raise... Orders, majority Linda and Senator uh, Sifuna. Yeah, uh, 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 thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. 
Uh, allow me to also uh, register my dissatisfaction in terms of the response by the CS, because, Honorable Speaker, the reason why we came this morning was because of the questions that we had, which are affecting the members of the public, which we were expecting the minister to respond to this morning. Honorable Speaker, I don't know whether we have the prescribed timeline when the minister is supposed to respond, whether he is, he is appearing or not. Because it's so shocking that a letter is just being brought to the House during the time when the motions or when the, the questions uh, are supposed to be responded to, Honorable Speaker. So it's, it's really putting this House in a very awkward position. And I want to say that uh, we need to set as a House, uh, I don't know whether it's, it exists, the time frame that they are supposed to respond. It's really so hurting. We came this morning expecting to get the answers. The very many uh, questions that we have are being weighted by the Kenyans. And I want to say I am one of the persons who is dissatisfied with that letter that has been written by TCS this morning. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Senator Fatuma Duro. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I wish to join my colleagues in contributing to this matter. Mr. Speaker, I don't want to say much because her much has been said, but uh, this matter is not about a political party. It's about an individual member of cabinet who should take up their responsibilities. Mr. Speaker, I really feel frustrated because there is nothing happening in this house as far as, far as someone's or invitation of this house is concerned. Mr. Speaker, we either pack and go home or we take our matter seriously because things are not actually going through the right direction. Mr. Speaker, I'm going to bring a statement on the floor of this house. We have a governor of Isiolo who has refused to appear before all the committees of the house. He has even taken a committee of the house to court, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we have our mortuary that is not working for the last one year. And I brought a statement to the floor of this house earlier this year, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, we should put our acts together. Otherwise, we have no business sitting in this house. And this matter must be taken seriously, Mr. Speaker. I thank you. Senator Modigi. Asante, Mr. Speaker. E, nataka kukosoa senator wa, mumba, wa Naropi ambaye ni rafiki wangu e, Mr Bandi sio wa Kenya kwanza ni sahi tuku kwa serikali ya muungano kwa hiyo kupigia sisi kerere kusema uh, yeye ni wa Kenya kwanza hiyo ni makosa kubwa sana ya pili rafiki wangu nataka nikwambie wakati ulikuwa pitisha uh, Kapeng Secretary wao kuingia hapa we ulikuwa metimua, ulikuwa inje au kuwa natuunga mukono ya mwisho ningetaka kusema mwesimu ambandi amefanya makosa kukuja hapa angekuja tumulize maswali kwa sababu unajua sisi kuko na ile pesa ambayo, ambayo tunalipia wa inkasi wetu pesa ya usuru anja tulipa kwa kipindi ya miezi tatu county ya embu sahi wafanyikasi wote county ya embu hakuna pesa ametuma hapo kwa hivyo angekuja hapo hiyo ni ile swali tungeuliza na asua sio county ya peke yake ni county ya rupa ina na sapa na wakati tulikuwa naendelea alikuwa nasema hakuna pesa saa hii angekuja tumulize swali kwa hivyo mimi naunga mkono eh, senator mbandi aweze ah, kuwa samonji akuja hapa anjibu maswali yake asani kwa speaker thank you uh, senator muma muyaka kadri uh, thank you honorable speaker for the opportunity to speak I want to add my voice that it is not acceptable that the CS Treasury can elect to send a letter this morning. The questions we are asking the CS are questions that have been moved for over six months. We asked CS Ndo.